What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today I've got for you an unbelievable entitled parent story to start off this video. Honestly, it's both shocking and just completely baffling. It's a very strange one, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail. So to set the scene, OP is a member of an LGBTQ plus choir. That means pretty much every member in that choir is LGBTQ plus. So apart from being a fantastic choir, every member of that choir is very open about their sexuality and you know, is happy to chat about it and is very accepting. That is all except one entitled person who proceeds to almost ruin the entire choir single-handedly. Let's get into the story. But if you transition, it'll be inconveniencing me. Hey everyone, a while back I posted in r slash am I the butthole about a person in my choir who wheedled their way into getting a solo performance without any agreement from the rest of the group. Now, I was deemed the butthole for not backing them up for said performance, but it didn't really matter in the end because I was in hospital for the duration of that concert anyway. But that's a whole other barrel of monkeys. I come here today with another story about this person and their entitled behavior. This happened yesterday and I'm still pretty irritated. So some backstory. The choir I'm part of is a queer-centric choir. It's supposed to be a comfortable and accepting place for LGBTQ plus folks. And it was. But the entitled person of the story frequently causes other people to be uncomfortable, annoyed, or just plain put off. They are extremely pushy, overly critical, and have a not-so-subtle habit of rolling their eyes and muttering under their breath when someone asks for help on their section's part. They're rude and pretty ignorant. There are so many more things, but I'm not here to write a novel, just a novella. I am an out and proud bi and trans person. With the whole being stuck at home during quarantine, I've had a lot of time to figure out myself and my identity further. And I've decided that I'm gonna go to a gender counselor and talk to them about starting HRT after lockdown is fully lifted. When I shared this revelation with my choir via Zoom meeting, almost everyone was really supportive except for the entitled person. Their first reaction was, but you were really strong soprano. If you transition, you'll just be leaving me and one other member of the choir in that section. To be honest, I kind of expected them to say some BS like that, but I'm surprised how calmly I replied with, okay, but I'm not doing this in terms of what the choir wants. I'm doing this for me. Choir has always been secondary. The choir director, manager, and all other choir members backed me up in saying that, and the entitled person fell silent. I got no apology though, no acknowledgement of how rude they'd just been. They just sulked and didn't say anything more until the topic changed. I've been thinking of leaving the choir for a while now, mainly because of this entitled person's behavior. It's just not fun for me anymore. It's another reason to get stressed out and annoyed, and I'm not about that life. This is just another straw on the camel's back. And the next practice we have may just be the one where I return my music and quit. So yeah, I just wanted to get that out there. Maybe I'm being a bit entitled and bratty too for considering quitting, but come on, who says that to someone when they come out with that kind of news in an LGBTQ plus choir? OP, please, whatever you do, do not leave the choir. It sounds like it's fantastic. You're with a great bunch of people and the only reason you may not be enjoying it for this one period of time is because of this one entitled person. I mean, come on, it's an LGBTQ plus choir. The whole point of it is being open with each other, you know, and, and accepting about, you know, it's like, Sexuality. I don't get it. I just don't get it at all. If anything, surely it should be the entitled person that gets kicked out and not you having to leave. Seriously, I, I, it should be obvious to everyone. Look, no one wants to kick anyone out of a group. Let's be fair enough on that. It's not a nice thing to do. But if they're the person that is causing other people like yourself to leave because you can't stand being in the same group as them, then unfortunately, they're the ones that need to go. And I just hope the rest of the members of your choir see that and actually, you know, make sure that you're not the one that, that leaves and that it's actually the other way around in the end. Now moving on to our second story. She tried to invite a no contact guest. For some context, my family's a little awkward. I'm limited contact with my mum due to years of abuse towards me, physical and emotional, and I'm fully no contact with my younger sister due to her being, well, a terrible person in general. Hateful, super homophobic, thinks people in the LGBT community choose to be victims because they like being treated badly, that being gay is a choice, that LGBT people don't deserve to be treated like actual people, etc. These are all things that she said to me, a member of said community. 
and my mum knows this what a start to this story my god so a couple of days ago my amazing future mother-in-law wanted to take me dress shopping to get ideas for a wedding dress along with my cool older sister we debated whether or not to invite my mum eventually deciding that the drama of not inviting her would be worse than anything she could do we were waiting for my mum at a restaurant to meet up with her before dress shopping and that's when i got a call from my older sister she said you might want to let mum know you don't want your younger sister coming with she just said she's invited her I hung up and called my mum, starting out with, no, my sister is not coming. And she immediately started in with a whining voice, making her voice sound like she was going to cry, begging me with phrases like, but why? And can't you just get along for me? And I know you had an argument. Yes, she called my younger sister, saying all those things to me, a simple argument. But can't you just move past it? And I already told her those topics are off limits. I don't see the big deal. I kept repeatedly saying no, but she kept getting worse. Her voice getting whinier, pleading with me and acting like I was ruining her entire day by not letting my younger sister come with. Finally, I snapped and said, no, mom, she is not coming. There was a beat of silence. Then, in the saddest, most dejected crocodile tear sounding voice I've ever heard, she replied, Fine, okay, I'll be there in a bit. Thankfully, that was the end of it. She arrived, we ate, she was cordial, but oh my god, the lion, the witch, and the audacity of this. <laughs> That's very good, by the way. She was only invited by a slim margin. Then she just turned around and tried to invite someone I'm no contact with behind my back. Yeah. There's a reason I'm limited contact with her. Yikes. Well then, a little bit of an LGBTQ plus theme to this video. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, It's very strange that two sisters can be obviously related and hate each other so much to the degree that, that this sister, OP's sister, well, I don't. to be fair, it's not even OP, is it? It's just her sister. Like, OP's a completely normal person. Seems pretty nice to me. Her sister's just off the rails. How can you be that mean and horrible and abusive towards your own sister? I don't get it. Especially, like, obviously, like, when you're kids, you might fight and stuff, but actually saying those horrible, abusive things about someone's sexuality your sister's I mean, it's just it's unbelievable i can't really understand what you would gain from that i mean she must genuinely believe the things she's saying because they're so outlandish that you wouldn't just say them for a bit of chat would you or to make a joke just a horrible abusive person i'm sorry op that that is your sister and to be fair to your mum, whilst you're obviously still limited contact with her for a reason i think she should probably understand that, that you don't want to see your younger sister Who's the most horrible person that it sounds like ever existed? Because come on, she's just horrible about everything that you that you stand for and that you are as a person. I get it that your mum obviously wants her two daughters to be friends, but after all the years of your younger sister abusing you, she should probably see that that's not gonna happen. And now moving on to our final story of today's episode. You need your ADA compliance stool, but I'm tired. For some background, I'm a cashier at my local Wally World. Most of the time, the people that I work with are really nice and management is great. However, due to the nature of my store, we occasionally get some crazy people. This happened about a year ago at my store, just before the shutdowns and mask wearing. Additionally, I have a rare muscular disability. So I have a stool that I purchased that I use while I'm working. While I can walk short distances and stand for short periods of time, I get in a lot of pain if I do it for a while. I do have a wheelchair, but I typically don't use it at work since I don't walk too much at my lane and the stool is a lot less bulky. I also typically work a small, belted self-checkout lane. Now for the story. So I'm working at my typical self-checkout lane when Karen comes to check out with a mountain of groceries. This woman already looks like a typical Karen, complete with the haircut and everything. However, I don't like to judge people based on their appearances, so I greet the Karen warmly and with a smile. Hello, how are you? I'd be better if this store wasn't so freaking confusing. I couldn't even find the gift cards. What kind of a store doesn't have gift cards? I noticed that there was a gift card stand right next to my checkouts. I've got a stand right over here, if you'd like one. The Karen was looking at her phone. Good. Get me two Chick-fil-A $10 cards. And hurry, I'm so tired of standing. Now I knew that although it wasn't ideal, I could walk that far. Of course, just a moment, I say. I walk over to the stand, grab the gift cards, and come back to Karen putting my stool off to the side 
and sitting on it. Good, you're back. Ring up my stuff and tell me when you're done. I need to call my mother. I was dying on the inside because it's a self-checkout, but I didn't want to be yelled at any further. Mom, I'd be happy to help you scan your items, but I need my stool in order for me to do that. <sighs> Excuse me? I'm a paying customer. I'm tired and I want to sit. Now do as I say or I'll get you fired. My legs are starting to shake at this point and the pain is beginning in my knees and ankles. Mom, I have a physical disability and I use that stool to avoid getting hurt. If I stand for too long, I get in a lot of pain. Well, I had to stand for hours to get all of this and you're probably faking your disability so you can sit. Just check me out. Now, my nice supervisor, who must have heard all of the commotion, comes over and sees that I'm standing and obviously in a lot of pain. Hey, OP, what's going on? Why aren't you sitting on your stool? Finally, a manager, your stupid employee won't ring up my stuff and she's wanting me to give her my stool so she can sit on her freaking lazy butt. It was at this point that my legs give out and I fall to the ground crying in pain. OP, are you okay? My supervisor goes on his walkie talkie and calls a code that means an employee is injured. Oh, don't be so dramatic. She's obviously faking it. Mom, she has a physical disability and needs that stool. Not to mention that you're at a self checkout. If you want a cashier to check you out, you should head over to our staff registers. But I don't want to wait in that line. At this point, the manager of our store has come practically running from the back. What has happened here? Does she need an ambulance? I shake my head no, still crying. Meanwhile, Karen starts snapping at the manager. Hello, I still need someone to ring me up. My ice cream is going to melt. Mom, we have an emergency with our employee. We need to help her first. Once this has all been settled, I'll gladly help you. She's faking it. And besides, she's too fat for this stool anyways. Mom, get out of the store or I will call security. You do not get to talk about my employee like that. You have to check me out. It's the law. Leave now. The Karen then starts screaming at my manager that we clearly don't know who she is or what she can do to us if we don't check her out immediately. During her rants, my nice manager, finally having heard enough, turns to the supervisor. Supervisor, call security. He nods and calls for them on his walkie. Karen then shrieks even louder, demanding the number for corporate so that she can report how horrible this store is at customer service. Security shows up quickly and they almost drag Karen out of the store. The manager and supervisor make sure I'm okay and tell me to take the rest of the day off, fully paid. They then call my mum, who comes to pick me up and take me to the urgent care just to be sure. Now I'm fine, but they give me a note to take some time off to rest. Later, I was told that the Karen was banned from the store. Moral of the story, don't mess with disabled people's accommodations. I'm sorry, but the fact that that moral even needs to be written down by OP is actually shocking. Who would ever mess with a disabled person's stuff? It's honestly unbelievable. Um, I actually got quite into that story, taking the role of Karen. I was getting pretty loud. I had to calm myself down halfway through, but honestly, th- that story is uh, just baffling. I- incredible scenes again. Three very, well, ridiculous stories in this one, to be honest. I don't really know which one was worse. They were all pretty terrible. I mean, actually, guys, comment down below. Who do you reckon was the worst Karen out of the three we saw? I have to go with the second one, because that younger sister, like, her morals and her-, her viewpoints on life are just honestly shocking, but the other two weren't that great either, let's be honest. Let me know down below comment who was the worst one anyway guys that is going to do it for this episode of r slash entitled parents it's definitely up there these three karens my god they're definitely up there on the richter scale of who's the most explosive that's for sure if you do want some more from me right away do check out a couple of videos on screen and if you are new to my channel and you haven't seen one of my videos before please do subscribe for more i post there daily and uh yeah with that being said i will see you all tomorrow for a brand new upload same time same place